Hi, I'm Dr. Kara Stewart from the Animal Science Department at Purdue University. Today I'd like to discuss with you using the Easy Breed Seeder for use in estrus synchronization in beef calves. We're going to cover the equipment required for putting in a seeder, then we'll go behind a cow and actually demonstrate insertion of a seeder, and then we'll finally talk about how we can use seeders in estrus synchronization protocols for beef cattle. I'd like to discuss the equipment that you will need in order to insert a seeder into a cow. The first thing that you will require are some uh, examination gloves. You will also require a general lubricant. This lubricant preferably should be non-spermicidal. You will also need an applicator, a cedar applicator that can be provided by a Zoetis, formerly Pfizer Animal Health, who produces the cedar products. You'll also need a bucket of water uh, with a mild disinfectant. And you should dilute the disinfectant according to the manufacturer's instructions. Some common disinfectants are Nolvasan and Effersan. You will also need some paper towels to clean behind the cow. And then you will also need the cedar device. Whenever you handle the cedar, you should always wear the examination gloves. So the term CEDAR is an acronym for Controlled Internal Drug Release, and it's a releasing device. And the actual CEDAR device is a nylon device that has a silicone skin around it that's impregnated with the hormone progesterone. There's 1.38 grams of progesterone on each CEDAR device. The CEDAR is a T-shaped device that has two wings that will open up from the a gun and stay inside the vagina of the cow. Uh, this kind of T part or the base of the T then or the trunk of the T is then what will also reside in the vagina and the tail will be external on the cow. When loading the cedar into the cedar applicator, the cedar applicator should be in the mild disinfectant and bucket of water. So you'll remove the applicator gun and shake it off to make sure all the excess water is removed. The cedar device then, you will take the two wings of the device and fold them together between your fingers. You always want to load the cedar into the applicator with the tail first and make sure the tail of the cedar is coming out from the slit inside the cedar applicator gun. So you will force the cedar device into the applicator, ensuring that the two tips of the wings touch each other to ensure comfort when inserting into the cow and leave uh, about an inch or so at the top of the gun where the cedar is uh, sticking out of the end of the applicator gun. Once the cedar is loaded in the gun, we'll coat it with ample amounts of lubricant. We want to approach the cow with caution and use our paper towels to clean behind her and remove any manure from the vulva. Use one hand to spread the lips of the vulva and the other hand to insert the insertion gun. Once you feel resistance, Push the handle on the gun without backing out the gun until full depression was made on the handle. It's best for the tail of the cedar to come out from the vulva and point down towards the cow's feet. This will minimize the chance of it being inadvertently removed by other cows pulling on it or her tail when she wags. Once removed from the cow, the cedar can be disposed of in the garbage. Reuse of the cedar is not recommended according to the label. However, some producers have had success with using each cedar twice. If you intend to reuse the device, it needs to be cleaned with a Nolvasan type of disinfectant to remove any foreign materials. Avoid iodine-based cleaners as they will deactivate the product. The devices then need to be dried. If you do not plan to reuse the devices until the next breeding season, the dried devices should be wrapped in aluminum foil and stored in a freezer. If you plan to use the devices relatively soon, the devices can be dried and stored in a safe location, preferably without access to direct light. Now that we have covered how to properly insert a cedar, I would like to discuss more details on what a cedar is and how it can be used for reproductive management in beef cows. The term cedar is an acronym for Controlled Internal Drug Release. The drug that this acronym refers to is the hormone progesterone. Each cedar device contains 1.38 grams of progesterone impregnated in the silicone skin which is covering a nylon mold. This device provides a continuous and controlled release of the hormone progesterone to the cow. 
The hormone is absorbed through the vagina into the bloodstream of the cow. Progesterone is a steroid hormone naturally produced by the corpus luteum on the ovary. Progesterone is required for the maintenance of pregnancy in the animal and functions to inhibit estrus and ovulation from occurring. An additional effect of progesterone is that it can stimulate non-cycling animals to begin their estrus cycle. For these reasons, progesterone is beneficial in estrus synchronization protocols for beef cows. When the cedar is in the female's vagina, it provides a constant source of progesterone and inhibits that female from coming into estrus. When the cedar is removed, progesterone concentrations rapidly decline, removing the inhibition of estrus, thus providing a synchrony to the timing of the onset of estrus in the herd. In addition, if a cow was not cycling, the cedar can jumpstart her system to begin cycling in sync with the rest of the herd. Most synchronization protocols include other drugs or hormones to be used in conjunction with the cedar. There are three hormones typically used in synchronization protocols. One is progesterone, which we've already discussed is the hormone provided by the cedar. A second hormone is prostaglandin. Examples of prostaglandin products are lutelice, estromate, prostamate, and several others. The third hormone is gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GNRH. Examples of GNRH products are cysterellin, factrel, fertigil, or ovocyst. These hormones are used strategically in various estrus synchronization protocols. The synchronization protocols can be divided into three categories, heat detection, heat detection and timed AI, and fixed timed AI. The heat detection category includes protocols where the breeding occurs at the observation of standing heat. Therefore, labor is required to detect for estrus in the animals in order to identify those animals which should be bred. Protocols in the heat detection and timed AI category include some breeding off of observed estrus and also some breeding off of a set time following hormone treatment. The protocols in the fixed time AI category breed at a fixed time following hormone treatment where no heat detection is required. So let's look at some examples of protocols from these three categories that use a cedar and are recommended for use in cows. There are additional protocols beyond what will be discussed here as well as differing recommendations for synchronizing heifers. Let's start by looking at the protocol Select Sync Plus Cedar. This is one from the heat detection category. This protocol begins with an injection of GnRH at the time of cedar insertion. Seven days later, the cedar is removed and prostaglandin is administered. Following cedar removal, estrus detection is performed and the animals are bred when observed in standing heat. Most animals come into heat 48 to 72 hours following cedar removal. This protocol can be modified to fit into the category of heat detection and timed AI protocols with only slight modifications. Just like the Select Sync Plus Cedar protocol, the GnRH injection is administered when the cedar is inserted, and seven days later the cedar is removed and prostaglandin administered. Estrus detection and AI will occur for three days, and then the animals can be bred at the standing estrus. The females that do not stand by day 10 are given a GnRH injection and can be inseminated with artificial insemination. There are other protocols that can be used without timed AI or slightly modified to include breeding both off observed estrus and timed AI. For example, the prostaglandin six-day cedar protocol is one where cows are bred off of only observed estrus. This protocol begins with a shot of prostaglandin followed by three days of estrus detection and breeding those females observed in estrus. On day three, those not observed in estrus receive a GnRH shot and a cedar is inserted. Six days later, the cedar is removed and the females receive a shot of prostaglandin. Estrus detection then resumes and the remaining females are bred on observed estrus. Again, this protocol could be modified to include timed AI. GnRH and AI, remaining, any of the remaining females that do not express estrus by day three following the removal of the cedar. The third category of protocols that we haven't discussed yet is the fixed timed AI protocols. A good example is the five-day CoSync plus cedar protocol. This protocol begins with a GnRH injection and insertion of a cedar. Five days later, the cedar is removed and two shots of prostaglandin are administered 12 hours apart. Approximately 72 hours following cedar removal, all females receive a GnRH injection and are inseminated. Again, this protocol does not require any heat detection as all females are bred at the fixed time following cedar removal. Success of any synchronization protocol is dependent on proper management of the animals and compliance with the program. Females need to be fed a diet providing adequate nutrition to reduce the number of females not cycling. Skilled labor is also required for estrus detection to maximize the number of females observed in estrus. 
Semen must be handled and stored properly to ensure that fertile sperm are being placed in the female, and skilled AI technicians should be used to ensure the semen is placed in the correct location within the cow's reproductive tract. Compliance with any synchronization program is the key to success. Producers should follow the program as they are outlined for best results. For more information about ester synchronization or timed AI in beef cows, please contact me, Dr. Kara Stewart, at Purdue University. This presentation was a production of the Animal Science Department at Purdue University.